Choosing spectacle frames can be quite a tricky business, but lots of people have to do it because lots of people need glasses. Many people need some sort of help for their eyes right from childhood, and others, as they get older, will need help, if only to make reading the paper a bit easier. But if I ever found that my own eyesight was going off a bit and that I needed glasses, then the first thing I'd have to do is to get my eyes properly tested. Just look into the mirror and read the letters from the top. H, A, L, T, N, C, O, L, H, A, and the last line's a bit blurred. Right, same thing with the right eye. H, A, L, T, N, C, and the next line, the next two lines are blurred. A bit blurred, fine. Let me just put this trial frame on. Just look straight ahead towards the green light. All right. That's good. The frame I'm wearing is to help the optician decide what is best for my eyes. He can try different strengths of lenses, one at a time, to see what effect they have on my sight. Let me just see what you can see with the letters now. H, A, L, T, N, C, O, L, H, A, E, C, T, N, O. That's fine. Just do the same thing exactly with the right eye. Right. Starting from the top. H, A, L, T, N, C. Ideally, the lenses would allow me to read even the smallest letters using just one eye at a time. T, N, O. If you do have an eye defect, then lenses help you see things more clearly. They can be worn in different ways. The commonest way, of course, is in glasses. But they can also be contact lenses. Little tiny lenses like that that actually float on the fluid on the surface of the eye. Provided that they are the right lenses for your eyes, then they will improve the way that you see things. People have known about the power of lenses for centuries. This picture was painted by Bruegel in 1564. It's the earliest painting to show a person wearing glasses. The scientist Galileo, born in 1564, made telescopes and glasses. 300 years later, glasses were commonly available to those who could afford them. But the eye test was a little different from eye tests nowadays. In fact, a clever inventor designed a machine for you to test your own eyes. 
and of course the range of glasses and frames that you could buy all illustrated in the spectacle makers catalog look a little different from glasses nowadays what does a lens actually do that makes it so important well that's a very complicated question but the simple answer is that a lens bends light look this box is filled with smoke now if we shine a beam of light through the smoke like that you can see that the beam is spreading out from the light but if we put a lens like this into the beam like that then the light beam bends a lens bends light but some lenses bend light more than others it all depends on how fat the lens is these two lenses are of different strengths one is fatter than the other this is the thin weaker lens and this the stronger one part of the work of the optician is to find the correct strength of lens for each individual eye problem once the optician knows exactly what strength lens is needed then the lens has to be made polished and fitted to the spectacle frame This machine is sticking a glass disc to a metal plate so that the glass can be shaped to make a lens. The glass is cut by a wheel that spins at very high speed. It's this cutting that turns the glass disc into a lens, which is the correct strength for someone's eye. The lens is polished to smooth away any slight scratches on the surface of the glass. Not all glasses frames are round. The lens needs to be cut again to make it the correct shape for the frame that has been chosen for it. and that cutting has to be very accurate or the lens won't fit properly into its metal frame. Most lenses are made from glass or plastic. These young scientists are making a lens by using water. The drop of water is fatter in the middle than at the edges. The drop makes the newspaper print appear larger. The hole in the center of the white card is covered with tape. This magnifying lens is built up from a number of water drops together to make one large drop held up by the tape. It is easier to see through this large drop. These young scientists are using a magnifying lens made from plastic. This microscope uses a number of lenses to make objects appear very large. This is what a crinkly sheet of plastic looks like. Look at that. Look, that's all almost made straight lines. Yeah. Look, focus a little bit more, Mahesh. That's right, that's really clear now. 
magnifying glasses made with a single lens and microscopes made with many lenses together help us to see a lot more detail than would be possible with just the naked eye. They extend our sense of sight. This is a special kind of microscope. It's called an electron microscope, and it's much more powerful than the ones that those children were using. It doesn't work with light and glass lenses like they did. It works with electrons and magnetic lenses, and it shows what it sees on this television screen here. Normally, this microscope at Birmingham University is used to examine metals, to find out about their strengths and weaknesses. But what do you think this is? I'll give you a clue. It's nothing to do with metals. In fact, it's the head of a fly. You can tell then that optical instruments like this extend our sense of sight enormously. But there are people who have a very limited sense of sight to begin with, or even no sight at all. They are, of course, blind people. And they have to develop the senses that they do have to make up for the one sense that they don't. And the sense that is perhaps the most important to them is the sense of touch. Problems of relief. Relief work was hampered because water mains and electricity cables were broken. Within hours, medical supplies were being... This young man is reading with his fingers. Countries. In the days that followed, aid was centrally organised by the United Nations and in the... Internet. He and his colleagues are using textbooks that have to be read through touch, through the fingertips. The Nicaraguan government... The letters and words are written in patterns of bumps on the paper. It's an alphabet named after the Frenchman who invented it, the Braille alphabet. Not all of our hand is equally sensitive. These young scientists are testing their fingers and palms using two pins a centimetre or so apart. In some places they can feel two pinpoints, in others only one. It is the fingertips that people use for reading the braille patterns. This pattern stands for the word, the. What does it feel like? It feels like a C. Let's try the next symbol. Feel that. Right, what does that feel like? Uh, a stick on its side. Yes, it's um, e. e. Try the next one now. It's a much bigger shape, isn't it? How does that one feel? Like a question mark. That's an N. N. So it's the E N last one. That's a D. The E N D. D. So what does your message say? The end. The end. <laughs>